Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. You know, the Cowboys keep taking two steps forward, two steps back. Everything that happens with them, it, it's just, just can't get going. Um, the good news is, Tyler Badass, that's what I call him, Tyler Badass, is actually uh, beginning to practice and getting off of the... Uh, uh, IR from where he pulled his hamstring. It's great news because um, Joe Looney kind of got thrown around quite a bit in that last game and uh, <clears throat> left a little bit to be desired. Uh, the rookie, of course, has actually played outstanding for a rookie and was actually the talk of the town until he pulled his hamstring. But here's where it's crazy. Now, we know Des Bryant tested positive for COVID the day he was going to be playing the Cowboys. Interestingly enough, today he ended up testing negative twice. So it turns out he had a false test uh, that happened that put him on the list and kept him from playing against the Dallas Cowboys. And you talk about somebody who is pissed. It's Des Bryant because I think his whole reason of coming back was kind of like when you're dating somebody, you know, and you break up and then you know they're going to be at the same party as you are, so you get dressed up really good. You end up making sure that you look great. You get that 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 new partner that's on your arm and everything else because you want to stroll past them and make them feel jealous that they no longer have you. And Des Bryant was stripped of that opportunity because, well, two false negative tests or two positive tests that were false or I, I, you, you understand. They said he had COVID. Turns out he doesn't. And, of course, now it's too late to change any of that. But for the Cowboys, um, another guy who just can't seem to get going. Um, from the time he was drafted at the draft in Philadelphia, um, with so much promise, you know, we got our Hall of Famer that's coming up and Drew Pearson going up there and literally bitch slapping the Eagles, um, you know, basically talking about the Super Bowl champions and, and they finally won a Super Bowl. I, I digress. I digress. But anyway, that was a historic moment. Now everybody tries to throw shade, but the originator, of course, was the original 88 Drew Pearson. But since that time, Woozy just has not been able to stay healthy and, and, and really make the impact that you would like for a guy drafted that high. And it's sad because now he's tested positive and now he's put on the COVID test, COVID uh, reserve list. Um, so he's going to be out for a minimum of 10 days unless it's a Des Bryant situation where he ends up, you know, in a couple of days has a couple of negative tests. Um Unfortunately, this is the sign of the times right now where you got to err on the side of caution. Um, I would have loved to have seen Des Bryant playing against the Cowboys. I think that that would have actually been special, not that the Ravens actually throw the football much. I mean, let's face it, he's gotten five passes all season, five. Um, it's just not what they do. And why would anybody throw against the Dallas Cowboys defense? As the Raven running back, as he's running through the line there and gets into the end zone, he says what? Easy money. What I think he really said, if you read between the lines, is the Dallas Cowboys defense is soft. Can't take it any other way than that. So you're up to date with the injuries and stuff. Oh, Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott talked about his calf injury. His calf injury, he said, is more of a contusion. And a contusion is really like a bad bruise. So he said that there's a big bruise that's uh, on his calf and everything else. And he doesn't know when exactly it happened during the game. But it happened, and it's just a little stiff, a little sore. And, you know, they're holding him out of practice because they say, you know where you need to run. You, you know, it, it just, just rest it, ice it, treat it. It'll be fine. We'll tape it up. We'll rub some dirt on it. Oh, they don't have dirt. We'll run, rub some of that, that rubber stuff that they got, in, the infield stuff. They'll rub some of that on there, and they'll send him out there, and he'll play. All right, guys. That's all I got for you. Tonight, there is the rematch of the Snooze Fest. That would be uh, New England versus the Rams in what has to be the most boring Super Bowl in the history of Super Bowls. And for those of you that say that Jared Goff is a great quarterback, I'm going to tell you, even though he made it to the Super Bowl, I, I, I give you that. But he had two wide, I mean wide open passes in the end zone, and he was late delivering them. Literally, I took a nap waiting for him to throw the football and woke up. It's like he hasn't thrown it yet. And by that time, the D-back caught up to him and boom, chakalaka, that's it. The only people that enjoy the game were probably New England ones. And 
well, let's face it, they win so many, it's like, oh, I guess hand us our trophy. All right, I'll catch you later.